Well, my wife and I had a had a child, <laughs> our first son, and uh, we realized that working at home uh, in the apartment wasn't going to work for us anymore. So we needed a place to work. And a friend of ours told us about the writer's room, and uh, which is the, the first space of this kind, I think, in New York City that was that was made. And uh, we went over and talked to them about it and uh, realized that the waiting list was way too long. At that time, it was two and a half years to, to actually get accepted into the space. So we talked to them and said, asked them what they thought about us starting up a similar space in Brooklyn. And they res responded very positively and said that would be great. Uh, because of their waiting list, uh, it would actually alleviate the pressure for them. Um, so that was the inspiration, really. Also, I had just lost my job. I'd been severed from a corporation. I was working at a financial company. And uh, I had started there as a temp, and then uh, very slowly the golden cage had been built up around me and uh, uh, had been feeling trapped and complacent at the same time. So it was difficult to, to sort of like have the motivation or initiative to, to leave the cage. Um, so they did it for me, and that was a major inspiration. Uh, so once, once I left there, then I started thinking about how I wanted my day to be structured and what I would like to do. And so it became sort of a, a great union uh, in terms of creating this space, making that sort of the thing that occupied me to uh, provide some sort of income, and also having a space for us to, to make our creative work um, and to be surrounded by an incredible community of writers, which has been an unbelievable inspiration. It's been totally amazing. It's, it's a fascinating experience. It's, um, as, a, as diverse as there are as many kinds of writers. And uh, some people don't like to talk to anybody at our writer space, um, but they will talk about how amazing it is to actually sit in a room with 20 other people working together and typing, uh, typing out their work. And you sort of get this buzz, this undercurrent of, of energy. Um, even though someone might be playing solitaire next to you, it doesn't matter because you, you sort of project that <laughs> They're doing this amazing work, and uh, it becomes it becomes this this motivator for you to work really hard, and uh, and in that sense you're still solitary because you can't see anybody in our space, um, but you can feel them, and that's that's a great experience. And then there's another group of people who who like to take breaks, and they'll come out into the lounge and talk to other people and sort of work things out verbally or or vent about uh, the current political things or whatever, whatever is on their mind and, and have great discussions about that and heated debates sometimes. And then they'll go back and get to work on their fiction or their autobiography, whatever. We, we try to keep a consistent environment uh, as much as possible. And I think that's the key, is to, uh, to allow people to know what to expect when they come into the space. Um, that's, that's important for fostering anything, I think, is consistency. Uh, change is difficult for everybody. Um, anytime we change one little thing in the space, there's always a little, little bump. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's a positive bump, sometimes it's a negative bump, and then everything evens out and everyone's okay again. So uh, we just keep a clean space. Uh, we provide um, you know, a place to put their food, uh, a place to talk on the phone, to print their work. It's, there's nothing, there's no secret really. Uh, I also try and keep the walls blank as possible in the back room, uh, provide an eclectic collection of books, um, which are completely random and found on the streets of Brooklyn. So uh, uh, that also, I think, helps a lot, too. If someone gets stuck, they can just pick up this random book about mythology and start looking through it, or quotation book, and find some inspiration there to you know, get the gasoline lit again and going. I think the the nugget is to um, which was which was the piece of advice given to me from from some folks at the writers room, which was keep it simple, uh, and don't try to expand beyond what you're trying to do, which uh, in our case was providing a desk, a lamp, and a chair. Um, there really is no need to differentiate yourself in in sort of like providing a space. So whatever you do, if you stay focused on uh, the primary objective, is which it should be a simple objective then you can do that really, really well. If you diversify too much, uh, it can become an issue. Um, one of the other things that, and, and when we first started, banks were very reluctant to even consider providing money to us. In fact, nobody gave us money. We had to put most of it on credit cards, 
luckily at that time it was all 0% credit cards. So uh, we sort of like took a major risk. Um, so we asked ourselves the one question of if we put, uh, I had a little severance package, if we put all the severance into this and we come out of this with a major piece of debt and it doesn't work, will we feel good about having done this? And uh, the answer was yes. It would be worth it. And uh, if it's worth the risk, then you can go for it. If it's not worth the risk, then don't do it. Uh, I did try to create a nonprofit, and the state denied it. Um, they, they said that we were not a nonprofit company. We were a, a for-profit company choosing not to make a profit. Interestingly enough, I realized from that and going over to the Foundation Center that we didn't need to be a nonprofit. We were just sort of like following in the footsteps of the Writers Room, which was a nonprofit. Uh, and so if you can think of ways to, to create an efficient model where you don't have to have extra programming and extra sources of revenue in terms of if you're a nonprofit, you need a grant writer. So that person needs to write grants to actually pay themselves and then provide another uh, stream of programming, which could be unnecessarily and more work than you actually need to do. Um, so for us, it really was one of these things of like, I need time to write and I need a place to work. And, and so we kept it as simple as possible. And I wouldn't consider that an entrepreneurial ac outlook, actually. It's more of a, a anti-entrepreneurial. It's more limiting and, and modest. And so I think it's important to look at what your needs are, uh, what your expectations are for yourself, and, and go there and not try to say, in, in 10 years, I want to have yachts and, and extra summer houses and all this stuff if that's really not what you want to do. <laughs> Because, well, first of all, you can't do that if you open up a writer space. Uh, but if that's the kind of business you want to open, then, then you go down that path. Mm -hmm.